And back again with Soul Blazer. Though with all my ranting last time, I probably think it was a Final Fantasy game. Yeah, I'm gonna try to stay on topic this time. Uh, let's see, we're heading on to finish up the Fire Dungeon. Yeah, there's one more after that. The last dungeon in this area, anyway. Okay. I've already finished half of this temple. I went back. I went back so I could get the ice armor because it's going to be coming very handy for this next part. And you'll see why. Okay. Uh, first, I got these flame guys. They shoot. I think they shoot. Yeah, just one shot. One shot in four directions. And I think that might be because there's a magic spell here somewhere. I think in this room that will uh, let me shoot in four directions. At once, I should say. Okay, release them all. Yeah, these tiles here, when they're glowing red like that, that means they'll hurt you to walk on. Unless you have the ice armor. It's kind of weird, because if you were just trying to get as much as you could done, you could do normally, it would put you right at the end of this temple. You go back, get the ice armor, and not really need it, because you've already finished all this. Still, it's not necessary. As you see, they have spots so you can uh, stop all of the uh, cooling down. Okay, another lizard pack. And another blue jewel. Which, in the very least, will hopefully have some EXP in it. Oh, no, light arrow magic. Okay. Yeah, it shoots a shot in uh, each of the cardinal directions. If, you know, I think I use Cardinal right there. It, it, north, south, east, and west. Or, in video game terms, up, down, left, and right. Okay. Yeah, this is a weird one. You gotta basically go down every path, but. Okay. More blink lizards. Oh, excuse me. I really should record these things at an earlier time. Okay, opens up the next pack. Another blink lizard. Beginning, remember why I started talking about Final Fantasy last time? Okay, well, we got the metal enemies here. I find these guys are easy to forget. But, um,. Uh, We'll worry about that when we get the metal sword. Might be a good opportunity for me to read another little short story. Okay. This should just open up the path in the last one. Okay. And... Four left. Okay. We know at least one of them is the metal scorpions. Oh, with some more lizards. Lizards, scorpions, ghosts, muckmen, plant monsters, flaming monsters. Ugh. A bird. And a tombstone, oddly enough. Ah, sleeping bird, okay. Well, we got another dream we can poke into later. And, you know, I think there might actually be two. Metal Scorpion. No, never mind. Alright, see, this one isn't just uh, one at a time. This is actually just releases very slowly. But I might be wrong on that. Those are by far the most aggravating enemies. The ones that release one, like on a timer. Because if it's slow, you basically slash and have to sit there and wait for it to actually pop out another unit. I suppose it was a way to make the game seem longer, but, uh, uh, I don't know. The game is very similar of a, to Dark Cloud. I'm kind of torn on whether or not I'll do that one. It's not a bad game, but, uh, I don't know. It kind of annoyed me where you, uh, 
They gave you the pretense of like being able to build the towns, return the towns. Uh, well, you know, you restore the town, you can place down buildings in that game. You can put them all in the town area, but uh, really, if you wanted like the ultimate reward, you had to put them in certain patterns. I don't know, maybe I'm just too picky. Second game was really good, though. Oh. Yeah, see, this is normally where you would stop and go back, because uh, you need something from the Greenwood to... some Something to prove you're from Greenwood. Or something from Greenwood, I think. This is to let you pass if you have some... You need something for the prove you're from Greenwood. And, um, well, well, we'll get into that whenever we find the item. For now, we'll get the shortcut. And it's not totally bad. We have the shortcut through the fire temple now, too, so. Okay, now we gotta find what the item is. Uh, Squirrel needs some exercise, and you'll notice he follows you. Uh huh. Let's see. I think, uh, uh, excuse me. Uh, I can't stop yawning. Ugh. Maybe I should go have a soda. Okay. Okay, I mentioned he picked up some dog bones. But I think someone here mentioned that the, the the item you need for proof, if you can find some old leaves from Greenwood, that that would work. And I can't help but wonder, why would it have to be old leaves? Couldn't you get, like, some new leaves from Greenwood and it, it still would prove just as well that you're from Greenwood? Couldn't you grab one of the moles and stick him in your pocket and make him tell the raft? I don't know. Okay, got another dream here. Oh yeah, it's Turbo the dog. That's um, He was killed after trying to save all the animals. Okay, so that's who we're trying to release. I'm the bird Tiki. Let me tell you how to use the raft. We also opened up a little passage behind him. We'll need that. Okay. Here we go. Residents of Greenwood. Maybe if you bring something that used to belong to Turbo, they might help you. Again, there are leaves from Greenwood buried in there. There are leaves from Greenwood all around. I could reach up to the tree and just grab some. Oh, well. I'm just saying, desecrating a uh, grave of their respected leader, it seems a bit much. Okay, uh... Woodston Trio. Okay. Let's see if we can anyone else we haven't talked to around here. Okay. Well, uh, Hey! God, I'm sorry, I can't stop yawning. Ugh. Okay, well, we're gonna go through this, uh, finish up the... Well, we already have finished up the fire temple. We're gonna move on to the last temple, which I think is the light temple? Temple of light? I don't know. Ugh, come on. Okay. Kill a few giant plants. One good thing about the sword is that it's more powerful. Okay. More muckman. I haven't seen them in a while. It could be worse. They could have made them like the puddings in Final Fantasy where you have to use magic to kill them. Speaking of which... I... Okay. And another mole. That reminds me, we're supposed to find someone called Wanmo. Like, something that belonged to her. Hope it wasn't more leaves. Okay, one Buckman. Lock these suckers out. And, should be on our way to the temple. Not sure what they're gonna drop, though. Let's see. I'm gonna bet another mole. Uh, 
Ugh, come on. We're not a muckman. Okay, here we go. And we have... A dog. Hey, it's the last member of the Woodston Trio. The post on, I think that's how you get medical herbs, so... Okay, yep, here we go. The Temple of Lights. Named uh, because it has lasers. I guess. <laughs> In this room, though, you're going to see there's an enemy that, uh, one of the spectral enemies, the ones you can't hurt without the spectral sword. It's very easy to see because he looks like the big, giant, bouncy fireball from uh, Mario Brothers. Not Super Mario Brothers, but the original arcade Mario Brothers. Oh, he's got like a face. So I guess it makes him more like the sun from Mario 3. Happier, at least. And as you can see, you paralyze, you paralyze him. And because of the frame skip, it paralyzes him sometimes invisible. Okay. Yeah, this is annoying. It's a bunch of... A bunch of um, monster layers that just open up more paths to other monster layers. This is the equivalent of having a key in a locked, sorry, unlocking a cabinet, having the search for the key to unlock a cabinet that contains another key. Oh well. The things people do to keep gamers invested. I can't really complain. I ate this game up as a kid. You know how it was, you'd go to the rental store, those were as old as I am at least, and uh, you'd look at what was left, like it'd be your weekend, school would be out, and you're like, okay, what will they got? And there were the games everybody really liked, like Secret of Mana and Final Fantasy, and uh, just anything popular. And then there's the next tier down of games that you'd go to if you couldn't get to those. Like, man's, had, the, man's was the video rental near where I lived. But, uh, Chrono Trigger came out and they had one copy. And if you hurried, you could get it. If you didn't, out of luck. And the way that was nice, because it got me to play games I probably never would have bothered buying, because 60 bucks a pop for my age at the time. Oof. Stuff like uh, Tecmo, The Secret of the Stars, which... I used to laugh at it being like one of the worst examples of an RPG. But I don't know, the game grew on me a little bit. It's still not what I'd call a great game, but they were trying some interesting things. And given that the RPG area for a long time was really just stagnating with the same turn based battles over and over again. Yeah, I'll take any innovation. I remember thinking that the uh, time button presses and stuff like Mario uh, Superstar Saga, not Mario, well, I guess Mario Superstar Saga, but Mario RPG, I should say, or uh, the really great, what was the name of that series? Uh, oh, and the, kind of the weird, okay, weird quirky characters is sort of an RPG trope, but um, that's going to bug me. Roger Bacon was in it. Like, all three of them. He's like a recurring character. It was like, Kodelka was the original. Shadow Hearts. Fantastic RPG series. Kind of evil deaded it, where Kodelka was supposed to be a horror game. Uh, first Shadow Hearts, a little bit less. Well, it still had horror elements. But... It kind of played some of them for laughs. I know the second game definitely started going in for some laughs. And then the third game was basically a comedy game. I mean, some of your characters included the, um, oh, was it the South American ninja. He basically wielded anything he could get a hilt on as a weapon. Uh, the Gunfu Native American. And his buxom female lead. Uh, who 
else was there? Was it the one with the giant cat? The series has so many strange characters, it's really hard to get into. <laughs> well, it's hard to describe. It's hard to remember which weird character was in which game. Sadly, the Kodelka, the first game in the series, or if I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but a uh, harder game to get into. Seems that a turn-based and grid-based combat, not a good match for heart, the horror genre. Okay, got another crocodile. Now we should be able to get to that area. Uh, oops, let me do a pause. Okay, there we go. What I was originally saying was that, um, yeah, back in the day, anything that had anything, any inspiration in the uh, turn-based, in an RPG that kind of got away from being turn-based, was just amazing. I remember the first time I played the Tales of uh, Destiny. Because you know, Fantasia didn't come out in America until much later. But PlayStation 1 released a one called Tales of Destiny. And it was like the, uh, it seems like it's like a side scroll, well, a side view at least. And you had more of an active combat system. Star Ocean, I remember, was one of the big ones that I played as a, when I was younger and had this sort of an active combat system. In a way, I think these like two genres, the adventure genre, games like this, and like RPG, like turn-based, I think they're always sort of going to come combine. I hear the new Final Fantasy is like that. I haven't played it yet myself, but um, I'm still hurting a bit from the 13 series. It's like they knew they had a stinker of a series, but would not give up on it. Not, I'm not talking anymore about Final Fantasy 13. Okay, we got the other shortcut opened, and not too far from the boss. You'll notice a little skip there. That's me um, completely dying on the boss the first time. I had him down to one HP. I just got careless. As you can see, this boss is actually three bosses. Uh, three heads you gotta take out. The first two aren't too bad. As you see, you can easily get out of the way and hit him in the corner. So they start moving. Each of them moves a little bit faster. Honestly, if you're careful about it, it shouldn't be an issue. Okay, Let's see. I'm already doing much better than the last time. Okay, the third one is the tough one. He's a lot harder. He's a lot faster, a lot more random in movements, and he does a lot of damage. Okay. Fortunately, I've gotten this far, and I still have my healing herb, so. Yeah, you see he bounces around a bit. It's really annoying. Okay. And almost got him, though. I think, yeah, I got him this time. Okay. This boss is done. Kind of reminds me of Giorama from the uh, Crusade of Sinti, doesn't he? Well, kind of, I suppose. And the Guardian of the Woods is apparently the Great Deku Tree point out this came out before, but then again, the idea of talking trees. Old as Lord of the Rings, old as mythology, I suppose. Okay. The only thing left here is the sun monster things, which I can't kill. So, we're done. We gotta go back to Greenwood, have a talk with the master of the woods, of the spirit of the woods, get our stone, and be on our way. After we talked of the last few things we released, of course. Okay, and there's the green stone. Okay. Oh, and there's Mon Mo the Mole. We've been looking for her. Okay, she needs you to lead her to the hole that leads to her home. And like she just said, you basically get her to stand in front of the holes and then talk to her. If it's the right one, she will say something. Okay. Actually, if it's the right one, she'll actually stop moving over it, so... There we go. Ah, okay. And, no, nothing happens if you wait there. <laughs> yep. Apparently, she was a ghost! But we do get her ribbon. Which means we can now... 
Oh, let's go ahead and equip it. And then I'll go talk to that mole who wants something that Moma had. And I think he's right here. Yep, there he is. Oh, another shock. He was a ghost, too. Strange, though. Wouldn't the, um... It says it was captured by evil. It must have been some other evil than Death Toll. I mean, otherwise we would have found her out there, too. And come to think of it, if she was captured in, like, in one of the enemy bases, that means, like, Death Toll did get her, but a ghost... Uh, Oh, whatever. Okay, let's give a, this, a chat to this little uh, stag here. Okay. Oh, stand back. Ooh, always nice. Hmm, maybe. Some much experience it gives me. Oh, uh, yeah, this is like the first mention of the Master's Emblems. Yep, find all eight of them. Don't have to use any gems of magic. Makes gems completely worthless. Unfortunately, they are rather tricky. Some of them are tricky to find. Some of them just involve going back and killing the metal and spirit monsters we already were killed before. And eh, some of them are a little more tricky, but we'll get to that later. Okay, the Woodston Trio the act is to turn into squirrels and do the old cup trick. Okay. Move around. Okay. So, yeah. So just yeah, to keep your eye on the right squirrel. And Bam. okay. When you get it right, you get a medical herb. What I'm saying it's a little more annoying because you actually have to go through all that in the little cups game to get it. Whereas you can snap back to the first town and just go to the, the shop. Okay, that's the one who ate the seeds and got the sword. We give us the sword. Oh, and we got one of the emblems. One down, seven to go. Huh. A mysterious symbol. <laughs> okay, well... That gets us past this area. Let's go ahead and do a good save. Okay, and now we're gonna move back to the movement screen. I should mention it again. Something about this the, the song the song on the screen. I just I've always I've always liked it. But we're finished the Greenwood, so now we're going to the underwater level. It's actually rather complicated, but we will get into that next time. Thanks for watching.